Andrea, welcome to simulation. Thank you so much. I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous when you asked me to do it, which of course means for me that I must. So I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I love that vibe right off the bat. It's like, if I'm feeling a little bit of discomfort, let's investigate. Must go there. <laughs> <laughs> must investigate discomfort. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's really true. But you're so uh, relaxed and easy. And you know what? I watch every episode that you recorded with somebody from NLS so far. And yeah, I mean, it was just, it's just so off the cuff and easygoing. And I don't know, I, I just really loved the whole vibe. It just made me realize, oh yeah, just be yourself, do your thing. And there's room for all of it. That's what you do. You make a lot of room for a lot of things to happen and you don't put a lid on very much and i i love that oh such a good way to put it yeah yeah i'm i'm really Lots grateful i'm really grateful that you've put so much love into what we've put love into which is producing the the content you guys can mm -hmm. find the no limit society conversations playlist on the yes. channel and We'll also be adding Andrea's to it as well, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that you you caught it. It's not it's not always so fast that people can catch what happens in other people's essence. Mm -hmm. And but you you caught it really fast, which is just total flow and total love and total space for the exact firework, the exact aroma that emerges from the dialectic to just shine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my talents. That's one of my unique uh, talents and, and natural things that I come with. Like, what do they call it? Um, your puzzle piece, you know, that's, that's part of it. I'm, yes. I'm able to recognize and translate just like that. Oh, that's so good. Recognize and translate. I love that. Yeah. For others. I do it for others a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it helps me also to fulfill the other part of it, which is like keeping things on track. Keeping yes. things relevant. Ooh. Not allowing stuff to go off the rails. Oh, I, I, I keep things very relevant for people all the time. You know, I mean, a glorified accountability partner, I guess. Ooh. <laughs> now I also know deeper why Mesh and Sharuk were also mentioning like <clears throat> co like co-creating with Andrea is really important. Like, look at this, right. Re recognize right. and translate. So that's right. another feature that I'm really familiar with. So it's beautiful that you're beginning to unpack this because in a sense, once you <clears throat> sort of get into these as Bentinho talks about this, like these bubble realities that click. And right. what's happening <clears throat> is when you undergo this process of, of clicking in for this conversation, this interaction that's happening, the more that you can register, recognize the other person and translate to them both what their unique essence is, they feel like you care about them. They feel like you're genuinely interested in asking them questions and listening to them speak about what unique firework of the infinite they are, what part of their spiritual awakening process they're in. And within like a couple of minutes, you can just build this really strong rapport with somebody because you know how to do it after mm -hmm. going through hundreds or thousands of these examples. And it is happening. I do care. I think that's why I, I, I can access it too, is because I do care. Like it, you said, it makes you feel like I care. I do, you know? So that's part of, I think that's part of what makes it precise. That's part of what gives it precision yes. and focus because it's fueled by, yes, that, that love. Love. That's what it's fueled by. Exactly. Love. And, you know, it used to be quite a, a detriment in my life because that was always my thing is I could recognize everything I recognize everything you know not just the stuff people want me to recognize and so it used to be a detriment and I have 
long since learned how to use it for not only my benefit, but the benefit of the other at the same time. And that's just, I suppose, practice, maturity, discipline, purification. Yes. All those things. Yes. A really good, simple example for people is when you kind of click into these bubble realities, can you keep at the top of your awareness, the top of your attention, can you keep, whether you're coming from a place of wanting to extract something from the other person to fulfill one of your needs or lack beliefs or wanting to be seen or trying to extract peace and happiness from them in some way, or when you lock in, are you coming from a place at the top of your awareness, top of your attention to serve? Truly, like you said, coming from a place of love, pure love after purifying, purifying, yes. purifying. It was, we were in conversation together when you mentioned, you said locked in, right? That's right. And so yeah. you get this one intelligence, the one infinite creator, you get that locked in. And once you get that really situated, it's much easier when you get into these conversations to be coming from a place of not needing anything and just serving hold the holding space mechanism as well as serving exactly the needs of what the other person is going through to unblock, to access freedom that they already are. Yeah. And, and, and you can, I mean, the whole idea is to get it locked in almost yes. unconsciously, right? So that every time I open my mouth, because I open my mouth a lot. So every time I'm going to open my mouth, then I need to not have to think twice about where I'm coming from. So that's been a heavy and consistent practice and unpacking and inquiry for me over and over again, especially after interactions for a long, long time in my life to be able to be in this place where I don't really think twice about it it's quite rare that, you know, I'm not giving to the situation. The other thing too, I would find myself in the past doing is, um, you know, how you said fulfilling a need for me, which I mean, I guess it is a similar thing, but fulfilling a need for someone else too. Like that, you know, and then you would think, well, no, no, I'm fulfilling a need for them, you know. And so it ends up being the same thing because of course there's only one of us anyway. So yes. And then once you realize that, okay, it's done. It's an all or nothing thing. I mean, this whole journey is all or nothing. It can't be parched over here. Over here all, you know, there's only one. And, but over here, I know better than God. Yeah, compartmentalizing. So we chop ourselves up into these little tiny pieces and we decide like, well, this, I need to make sure I take care of this. Like God can't take care. Of, I can't leave that to God. Are you freaking kidding me? This over here, I have to, you know, and this, but over here, okay, I can. And what we start to realize is that that's like, that's not, under, that's divided, you know? And really we want to come from that undivided wholeness, which means everything is the same thing. And also everything has to be imbued. Like I love what Richard said in the Costa Rica retreat about the infinite concern and the finite concern and how we need to bring the infinite concern down to imbue the finite concerns so that we can remember that now they're not, finite anymore because they're fueled by the truth and the love and the light and the awareness so it turns them into sacred so everything's sacred or nothing sacred gosh that's so good there's no dividing of this area will be the separate self trying to extract peace and happiness out of reality. But this area over here, okay, I'll let this area, maybe like with kids, this one's sometimes a little bit more like, oh, I had this profound 
as a parent, I birthed a child into the world. And now because of that, I've opened up my heart chakra a little bit. I'm less selfish. So now I'm willing to like give more to serve this child. And so now you've brought some sort of infinite concern to only one member of your family, you know, type thing. And like, but anybody outside of the family, no, 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 no. There's still solar plexus. The ego is still strong there, but the heart only mm-hmm. opened up for your offspring. It's so fascinating mm-hmm. uh, how like that kind of relationship. It works for relationships too. And, you know, having that one significant other then that becomes the most important relationship in your life and everything else is every other relationship is less important you know but when you actually bring it in in that truth there's no difference between any relationship you have with anyone anywhere ever they're all the same they're all the same they may have slightly different um forms i suppose tastes um maybe even taste is cool Taste is cool. And For even sure. even then yeah. that gets transcended, but it's cool to stay at the taste stage. It's it's cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. To you switch know, between the lenses I, of perception for that, as so you would why like. Am I gonna <laughs> relate to somebody different than I relate to this person or that? Like, I mean, that's just not I'm not in integrity when I do that. I'm not in it. Where's my integrity? You know, how I show up depends on who I decide I'm gonna be, not who anybody else is or isn't Mm, and that's when we say the locked in then you're always perpetually showing up from the place of intelligent infinity at play with itself and therefore serving the creation awakening truly shepherding it in a non-attached way so i don't need to do this for me to feel better because i'm the agent that is serving the creation awakening to be seen as that there's all these little tricky nuances you mentioned this and i thought this i thought this was really interesting it's that you don't need to think twice about when you're where you're coming from i feel like this is a very advanced level of spiritual awakening and i feel like it could be useful for us to unpack this on the show so i would say that the the moment when you realize that you've been coming from a place of separation perpetually is like the first profound like wow like i get that i've been coming from that place perpetually and then you sort of begin to sort of see over and over again like oh, okay so there's these streams of where i can come from god from intelligent infinity versus come from my separate contracted person condition identity and then you over time you you know, you pick more and more towards this until it locks in. And as it locks in, then these conditioning still occasionally kind of bubble up, but you're in a much more Gnostic place. And so you can see them coming, you can see them coming at that point. But you know, the first realization that you're talking about, the first one where you realize and a thief and you have been your entire fucking life that all you ever do is pretend in order to get people to like you or accept you or believe you in order to make your space when you realize that like when you actually realize that in your life it's devastating it's devastating it's so devastating devastating okay and i mean and it's and it's okay i feel Mm. like it's okay if it's devastating allow it to annihilate you because as ganga ji would say allow your feelings to annihilate you and you will find that which cannot be annihilated beautiful and so then you have to recover like then it takes some time to recover from that for many there's a grief that comes along with that you know a forgiveness Um, you know, I really think that that's one of the first stages of the know yourself, accept yourself, become the creator. I think that's one of the first stages of knowing yourself is when you realize, oh my God, I'm a fraud and I've been a fraud my whole life. Yeah. 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 So then, then we go from there. 
And if people stick to it, if people can recover, can indeed recover from that, well, then there's only one directionality to go now. And it's more awareness in order to like vigilantly practice. And then every interaction is on the chopping block. It's like, why did I say that? How come this? Why this? Why that? Until you get really used to seeing your lack in action, your fraudulence in action. And then it becomes identifiable very quickly. You know, and then you even get to a point, or I did anyway, where I noticed it mid interaction. And even admit it or declare it mid interaction with whomever I'm speaking with and then turn it around at the same time. And that's a trip. Like transparently in front of people, shit, look what I just did. And you sort of share with them, this is what's happening for me right now. And I need to just take a moment to like, tell the truth about this and then I want to flip the script and come from a better place Kim, that's so high level I love that fuck yeah it's so just I courageous to do it out loud. and brave I love that yep that's a very high level of awakening again is just when you have total freedom with speaking the truth as it's going to hurt you to admit <laughs> like it hurts you it's like a confession it is and, yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. it's like a confession and every relationship becomes a confessional yeah yeah you wow. know wow that's and, so profound um, but i feel like it helps it helped me along in such a faster way than if i would have kept that process locked inside of me you know, and beating my head against the wall. Plus, I've since learned as well from many people that I did that process with for myself, who graciously held space for me in those moments, how much they learned from that for themselves. You yeah. know, so I feel like in that moment, I could automatically turn into service to others just by sharing my process. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, and that's how come. I think this whole idea of transparency when we're in a group, like right or wrong, doesn't matter. Are you being real? Even if it sucks, just be real. Yeah, just be real. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Perfect. Because that can, once so we perfect. see it, we can change it. That's so perfect. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. I love how simple the just be real is. It's just so directly concise and punctual. And it mm -hmm. kind of gives either if you're asking yourself, just be real about it, or if you're asking somebody else in the scenario, just be real about it. It gives the exact short, concise burst permission slip to enable the, okay, was that the truth or was that an untruth? And then mm -hmm. was that coming from the contracted person identity or is it coming from God? And you get to literally have the moment the permission slip it's such a quick permission slip to just do that check moment until you get it where you don't need to have to just be real yeah mm -hmm. well and i and you know within um i have a partner of 10 years and uh you know we do our best to to have as conscious of a relationship as we can and and just be real you know how that translates sometimes for us is I'm scared. And so I'm, I'm not going to do that thing, or I'm not going to go in that place, or I'm unable to go like, so it's just as simple as being real enough to own the fact that you're scared shitless, and you're not ready to go there, whatever there, wherever there is, you know, instead of posturing and pushing and forcing and becoming that opposite thing, you know, in your ego, that is just, shows everybody anyway that you're scared but instead of compensating using compensating behavior and showing everyone you're scared anyway because who the hell can't see through that shit instead it's like just be real i'm scared not so easy yeah but even from partner to partner 
like in a relationship to be able to say that, then it's easy for me to say, okay, cool. You got this. Like, I, I trust that you're going to figure it out because you know that you're scared. So you know what to do and cool. I can, I can go do me. Yeah. So it's a big thing. And, and what about a group setting? Same thing. Like how many people in a group setting, you know, all of a sudden the topic turns into something and it rubs up against you. And instead of just saying, whoa, that's freaking me out. Like that's touching everything inside of me. That's making mm. me angry or that's making me scared. No. What do we do mm -hmm. instead? It's like, yeah. well, I think this, or I think that, you know, we try to legitimize the fear by pushing it into some sort of like makeshift idea instead of just admitting the truth. The thing is you can go so much farther when you do, when you don't, you have to go through all that. So that's oftentimes where I come in to keep things on track is in moments like that, where I'm just like, okay, clearly, you know, you're scared. So where do we have to go with this? Do you need help right now? Can you talk to somebody in a minute? Can we continue with what we're doing here? Or, you know, and it's, it maybe it's not easy to hear, but. Yeah, this is some ultimate space holding stuff. This is really ultimate space holding. I love it. We should, we should start a show ultimate space holders <laughs> which is i guess in a sense what what nls is kind of in a little bit um ultimate purification yeah yeah which is it's beautiful well, it, is. Yeah. it is and it's like how do you how do you actually create anything or get anything done i mean quote unquote or stay on topic when you can't be honest, right? Because then you have to veer off into all these directions and all those directions have nothing to do with anything except whoever's speaking their lack. Mm. That's it. Or otherwise we'd be on point with what we're talking. And it's not bad. It's not a bad thing at all. It's inevitable. I mean, that's part, that's what it's really about. That's what everything's really about. You know, it's not about our job or our relationship or that's not the thing. That's just the thing to get us to pay attention to the thing. But it in and of itself is not the thing. We're not doing it for the relationship or for the job or for the money. You know, those are just the catalysts that help yeah. us to pay attention to the actual thing. But everything, yes. everything from the moment you open your eyes you are bombarded with catalysts, yes. period. Yes, yes. So if that's the case, then it's just like way better to just surrender every time. Because then you have a chance. If you don't, you got no chance. <laughs> You're just going to be running and bumping and running forever. Yeah, I, I love the visualization of seeing catalysts everywhere in a massive webbed mm -hmm. play that the creation is. And that if you begin seeing like the complexity of like in Buddhism is called this dependent origination. There's all of these insane causal webs of thousands of things that happen for you to just get your blueberries. You know, there's mm -hmm. all of the, all, at all these levels, or, you know, even your little, like you described a moment ago, you, you're speaking, but speaking from where? Is this speaking from a place of lack so that the other person can say, oh, 
yeah, yeah, validate you. Or is right, this, right. or is it coming from a like a place of like just a child like fireworking expressive? Is it coming because you already know it's all love? Uh, is it coming from the place of potentially exploring holding space for unblocking for for others to enable more freedom of the life to wake up to itself? So that's a core. I would say distinction is both seeing the catalyst everywhere because then you gain that hyper subtle perception to see that and then it feedbacks on itself. And, and then the other one is that we kind of been talking about this, but it's just boils down to in our, the title of the episode that we've been using is getting it right. right what, right. what is that? Is that, Mm -hmm. as simple as we've been talking about is getting mm -hmm. you being intelligent infinity everything being intelligent infinity and not when you don't get it it's when you come from this place of lack from separate contracted identity yeah exactly exactly and and getting it can be like a really tiny little shift yes. that creates a realization in the moment small Somebody can get it, a small little tiny realization that helps them to understand something about who they are or a big, huge one. But either way, it doesn't matter because when I work with people and they have this, just this tiny shift that enables them to get something about who they are, even a glimpse it freaking blows up their life. It changes them in so many ways, you know? Because here's the thing, when you don't get it, you don't know that you're not getting it. Yeah. That's the hard, that's what's so difficult. You wanna know, I'm gonna tell you the story about this calling. When I was five years old and I was having a, it was my birthday. And I blew out the candles on my cake. It was just my family, my mother, my father, me, uh, and my two sisters. My brother wasn't even born yet. And I finished blowing out my candles and my father said, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> yeah. And I said, oh, I was so excited because I knew exactly what to say. And I said, oh, daddy, I don't want to be anything. I just want to help turn the world right side up. That's what I said to him. And he backhanded me across the face hard and said, don't ever say that again. And in that moment, do you know what occurred to me at five years old was two things. Oh, my God, he doesn't get it. In that moment, I was like, I get it. He doesn't get it. And the second thing that occurred to me in that moment was, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> and that, so, so I've known that since then. And I was forcefully not allowed to pursue it. You see? for most of my upbringing. And especially like when we were talking earlier about culture and growing up in an Italian family. And, you know, so that always factored in big for me because I had to obey, which means I could never ever make my own decisions or do what it was that I felt was important to do. So it took, it took a long time. And now I obviously look back and I realized, of course, that was all needed. I chose that. The pressure Because I chose to take all of that and transform it. Yes. Even just to show that it can be, that it has really no, it never went away. Who I was never went away. Like, you know how Ben says, once you realize it, you can't unrealize it. So I knew it from five, it never went away. I was just biding my time, 
biding my time. <laughs> I mean, of course, by the time I left my family, I was riddled with baggage. Lots of it, you know, but simultaneously, that realization was there as well. So that's what fueled me. I was like, I got a lot of work to do now. I got to begin the work of disabusing myself of all of these defense mechanisms that at one time had purpose and now no longer serve me at all if I want to do what I said I'm going to do. So what a profound story. It. Yeah, that's the getting it that I'm yeah. talking about. Wow. And I, I encounter people all the time who have that same mentality as my father. And I and I get it. I get it. You know, it doesn't bother me anymore. It used to bother me a lot. It doesn't bother me anymore. Now I realize that all they want to do is get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so it's the same I seeking. how can serve that? Yeah, so how can I serve that? And of course, I know exactly how. I grew up with the king of that, my father. Wow, yeah. yeah. Holy shit, yeah. That was that was a huge story from such a young yeah. age. Uh, we usually don't have such yeah pivotal, highly remembered stories at young ages like that. And it was really interesting also how you said that you don't want to be anything, but that you want to flip the world right side up. It was yeah. always in my head. That was always a narrative in my head for sure. That. As a child, I always perceived the world was upside down, but that you could turn it right side up. You could. Like upside down and backwards, kind of. Yeah, that's been a common one of the sort of spiritual wisdom as well, mm -hmm. is to yeah, turn everything like outside in um, as yes. well, another way. Yeah, but... I really like that. In a sense, it's like there's an attractor and it's Maya, it's the illusion and it's it's all the way out here at the farthest pole. And then there's this other pole, which is the absolute and it's GPS callback. And you have these two poles at play. And like, this is mm -hmm. where the whole journey and the whole experience of intelligent infinity playing with itself happens. And even that's a fucking story because it's all just non-dual and yeah, but it's, but it's funny to sort of like architect out a map that seemingly mm -hmm. makes sense. And that's totally what you're mm -hmm. sharing. It's like, you, mm -hmm. you know, even from such a young age that there's, like, why is it this yeah. way? Like, is this not supposed to be it's a her. play, a playland? Because, because mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, both very much so you know heaven on earth but it's also disaster on earth simultaneously and we all know that that's caused by one thing this contracted identity of separation and and that that's the thing that you then went after but you couldn't go after because you were held back by this style of familial mm -hmm. yeah vibe which is so common in cultures is like i'm gonna have a kid and then i'm gonna control the shit out of that kid and then it's like pretty much bruh like give a little bit of infinity some of its will bruh like you're just <laughs> you're just choking the will bruh like yeah and and uh and then it pressure cooked it pressure cooked yeah. you because then you you know you sprung out because who knows you could have went for like whatever the couple of like five-year increments in the process of just sort of tasting of what you were set out to do and just kind of you know maybe went up a couple steps in the process but because you were pressure cooked so much like a freaking wind-up toy then like mm -hmm. as soon as you broke out of that like it all unwound and you rocketed it up like so many of these like and now you're doing everything you're doing today at this much more sort of larger macro level view of what is possible yeah that's what it felt like i mean yeah i mean the next greatest space for me happened maybe 
10 years after I had, you know, I, I, I stayed where my, my father lived, where my family lived for quite some time, well into my thirties and the end of my thirties. And uh, at one point I, I finally decided to leave. I said, this is it, I'm leaving. I had a child, I was a single mother. And I took that child and said, we're gonna move east. We're gonna go move to where my sister is. And I'm gonna finally live my life on my own terms. So that's where that comes from. And my father said to me, when I told him, he said to me something that he would say to me that he's been saying to me my whole life. Every time I wanted to do something that he didn't agree with, he would say, if you do that, you are no longer my daughter. You're no longer a part of this family. You will no longer be welcome in this house and I will never speak to you again. That's, he used to say that to me ongoingly at least once a week. And I'm not joking. So at that time, when I told him that, I called his bluff. I said, well, if that's what's going to happen, then that's what's going to happen. See you later. And I left. And he didn't talk to me for seven years. And I, and I wasn't considered part of that family for seven years. But you know what's crazy is, in the funniest, most unconscious way that he didn't realize, he set me free. He set me free in such a wonderful, amazing way Wow. And I was able to full speed ahead, go ahead and do my thing without ever again having to look over my shoulder. Carte blanche is what he gave me. And I'm grateful to him for this day. To this day, I'm grateful to him for that, even though he doesn't know about that. So from that point, it was about 10 years later that I had another really profound understanding and realization as I worked through all of my conditioning and especially my cultural baggage and all of that. And it was that none of that ever happened. None of it ever happened to me. None of it. I am completely unscathed by all of it. Perfect. And that realization enabled me to clean up all the last little snail trails of baggage that I was hanging on to. Wow. That's what did it. That was the momentum with <sighs> that realization that like, this is none of this is true. You, you are totally unaffected by all of it. It never happened. And then it was just like, <gasps> gone. You know, all of it was gone. And now I don't identify the way that I move in the world against my family of origin anymore. It's done. It's finished. It did its job. Doesn't mean I don't slip at all. Doesn't mean that. Of course I do. But that's mine. Not my family. That's mine. I'll be the judge of that. I'll be the fixer or changer or transformer of that. Nothing and no one can get in the way of what I decide to do with that. And it's free. Very free. Damn pops. He really created that pressure cooker. Those are those are really big ultimatum points. Like, Dang. yeah, those are huge ones. And then, like, just that, like, the courage that's needed to to get past those to find these massive gifts and treasures on the other side. And I really love how you go th you explain going through the process of deconditioning the separate self identity. And then mm -hmm. realizing that it never happened to you. And that's like the second sort of profound realization that then enables the, the energy of the entity to sort of relax and surrender at an even more unprecedented level. And 
to sort of lock in, as we've been saying, the getting it of the one intelligence, like this whole universal odyssey that we designed that was so beautiful that I went on as intelligent infinity also never happened. Yeah. And that's when you get this nothingness, this infinitude, and this beautiful Andrea that you get all at the same time. And you can navigate through these lenses as you will. Because here you are telling a story about your little, you know, five-year-old cake uh, and blowing up the candles and then getting <laughs> like, you can't flip the world right side up. You know, like that story, one could easily sort of just be like, oh, nothing happened. And one could easily be like, I'm just empty full. Uh, but instead, it's like it's like the beauty of <laughs> is beauty of being like I can put on the Andrea lens and tell you this beautiful story that will also help sh share for other people in their journeys what could be very useful and valid as well and helpful. So I, I really and I see just see a lot of young people in that same place, especially now. Like I know, I know, like it wouldn't have it wasn't going to go any other way for me because the the strength of conviction I was so much in my strength of conviction at five there was just no other thing that was it and nothing could change my mind it wasn't even like it was my mind I didn't feel that way so that was never going to go away and I feel like maybe that wasn't so and maybe that wasn't as common at that time when I was young you know, for many children to feel that way at five or have that conviction at five years old, but more and more that's the case. More and more that's the case. I see it because we all are born at a different jumping off place, generation after generation after generation. So I can see so many kids now that age or even just a little tiny bit older. And they too know, they too have that conviction, but they're not allowed to. And it's like, it, it always struck me, even at five years old as a weird thing. Like if I'm not allowed to have this conviction, then how do I have it? Mm, yeah. It was such a weird thing when I was yeah. young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're telling me I'm not allowed. That doesn't, it's not having any effect. Yeah, it's not effectively changing anything about the conviction. So. Wow, it's so interesting how the we 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 when we were talking about it earlier, we were talking about like catalysts, like just swimming in this ocean of catalysts. But it can also be viewed simultaneously as this programming between entities of intelligent infinity, and they're just so interesting. You have this like older software running that's yeah. like it's like un it's totally unblocked from you know solar plexus the heart let's say and that you have like this kid that's like in many ways we can say that kids have super unblocked chakras and kids are just like they're swimming in infinite possibility and like a kid is wanting to we've actually had um We had Maya Urmides on the show, and Maya is nine years old. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, and she spent a good chunk of the show explaining to us how annoying it was when she was trying to color a animal a way that it's not normally <laughs> colored in the world. And, yeah. <laughs> And then the, and the teacher is just like, you can't do that. It's stupid. And so this is the infinite possibility trying to express itself. And then this sort of like older unblocked. Yeah. So older blocked entity that's running software that does not enable the other less blocked entity to pursue its infinite possibility. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty common. It's pretty common. It's cute That's that sure. 
it's cute when it's really brought to the child level as well, because it's also really relatable because adults have also went through similar processes. It doesn't even, sometimes it doesn't even matter if it was at five or if it was at, people feel like it happened when they were a teenager or when it happened when they're an adult in the workplace, just like, like I'm, I'm swimming in this beautiful infinite possibility and Mm -hmm. like, it's kind of funny because as a kid, when you're kind of told that you're infinite possibility is dumb and it doesn't work that oh yeah when you're when you're an adult because we've sort of went through this process as well you're we're submitting really great ideas for the projects that we're working on and all this type of stuff and we learn how to also like not be attached to it which is kind of interesting <laughs> like we'll give it up so easily <laughs> yeah it's so interesting yeah. yeah 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 no for sure it's crazy oh my gosh it's so crazy but all part and parcel Gosh, that's so cool. Your, your journey actually rings so true to your current entity state of being. Totally. Oh. Rings so true to it. Like the story matches so well to what you represent energetically now. Like, wow. you, and you describe cool. it so perfectly as this like pressure cooker that yeah. then caused this super explosive freedom firework. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, big time. And I've never felt, um, like I've always felt that way now. Like since that happened, it's like I'm, I'm endlessly free and endlessly transformative and liberated. And like, there's no excuse. There's no um, blockage. There's no, like, just go, that's it. Like I don't have the moment, I don't have time, I don't have um, the inclination to complain or to um, be bothered or to, yeah, I mean, and any emotion is very short lived because I do think it's important to feel your emotions, that's it, but they're not for anything else. And so when you start using them for other things, then you start becoming a victim and living from that place. But if you just feel them, they most likely change within, I don't know, 90 seconds, if that, and then keep going, keep going. I'm not a robot by any means, but at the same time, I'm not gonna be following shiny objects around either. No way, I am my shiny object. Ooh, fuck, I love that one. That's a good one. Yeah. I am my shiny I, object. I am. I, yeah. That's who I follow. That infinity inside. Yeah. Exactly. And I know the difference. We all do. We all know the difference. Bullshit if you tell me you don't know the difference between coming from one place or another. You know what it feels like to be infinitely free. And everyone knows. But not everybody wants to do the work or make the decisions that you need to in order to have that constantly, consistently. But it is available to everybody all the time. And everybody, I think everybody innately knows what that feels like. I don't think it's learned at all. I think it's inherent, innate. More innate than like the conditioning. That's totally, totally. It has to be natural. innate. It has to it's, be innate. It because has to be. Yeah, the whole odyssey is perfectly designed to have that feedback mechanism that you're talking about where people know the difference. Now, if we're running the scripts that make us completely automatic it's really difficult to get the entry into becoming aware of what is being discussed now that's you there's still know. but you know you know because like you said 
as a kid, especially, there was more of what was true in terms of especially that like freedom and just joy and peace and play and all that type of stuff. And then all of a sudden there's this cage and this box and all of this like, mm-hmm. all, and, and then it's like, what is this? And then you know there's a difference between those and you know that there, you know, the process of melting this cageless cage is, you know, Ramana Maharshi. It's either zero steps to freedom or endless steps to freedom. And, you know, sometimes you, it's a choice to say that it's going to be zero steps to freedom and then to find yourself a really fucking good guru, a really good truth channel that then helps just the unblocking within yourself because you're the one that's doing all of the unblocking of melting that cageless cage and then going right back to that state of of pure freedom but there there's got to be this as close as possible to the ineffable it's true it's ineffable but as close as possible as you can get use that use those symbols those maps those interpretations to fucking abide as the perfect freedom that it already all is. Yeah, it's in us to do. Yes. For sure. Yes. It's why we're here. So, and we all know the difference and it's all going in that direction and only the time it takes for you to get on board. Is yes. Your choice. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. It's a cosmological mechanism. So you may as well decide to be reality awakening to itself earlier rather than Mm -hmm. pursuing the shiny objects outside of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well participate. (laughs) Excellent. You know? Excellent. Did you, may I be sensing that you feel like you, you do need to go to another meeting or do you have? Oh God, no, 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 no. I just had to shift. Yeah, I don't have a tripod or anything and I'm kind of holding my phone because I don't have a computer. So yeah, (laughs) but I don't have anything else scheduled. This is it, baby. Okay, cool, cool. We'll probably ride for, yeah, however yeah, much no longer. Worries. Yeah, cool. We okay. can take our time. I'm okay. not in a rush. Cool, because we've been unpacking some beautiful things. And you could get a little um, either, yeah, pop socket or a little um, like gorilla driver mm-hmm. just to put the phone up against something or whatnot just to make it easier. I know. Actually, yeah, yeah. I have one, but I didn't bring it with me. Okay, yeah. I do yeah. have a tripod. Like it could have been set up right here by the bed and I could have... Been, but anyway, yeah, 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 cool, cool. I'll learn, I'll learn. Even a computer, I'm gonna have to break down and buy one. I think, like, I've written almost my entire book on my phone. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's it's just it, it. Feels more convenient for me in a lot of ways. I don't know how else to. Yeah. To set people just think I'm crazy. What? What are you? Do? And I don't type either. Yeah, voice to text it. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that too. But anyway, for other reasons, it wasn't about the book that I would get the computer, but it's more for other reasons, like all these Zoom calls now and all the, you know, maybe it would come in handy. So we'll see. I love the idea of just being able to like walk right out to that beach in Bali that you're at with your phone and write the book. Yeah. Because it's that much easier than lugging a laptop. Yeah. 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 And it's just, I don't know. Uh, I like having it because I can do it anywhere. <coughs> I don't have to be prepared. I just have to have my phone with me and yep. there it is. Yep. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And coming to Bali, living in Bali, moving to Bali, then that was the beginning of another whole body of work, you know, of really extricating myself from the world as I knew it, you know, and coming to live here, which gave me an in-between space to live in, because I'm not part of this world or this culture, and I'm too far away from the one I left. And so I have this really privileged place in between where there's a lot of freedom for me to take advantage of all the beauty and 
energetics of this island without having to pay for it, you know, like sell a part of your soul for it. So that's a really wonderful position to be in. And the energies here, as like with every island, are very concise, you know. The purer you are, the more those energies kind of fuel you, help you, uplift you, purify you, you know. And the more you are living in your ego and your untruth, coming from that place, the more you're a liar, a cheater, and a stealer, the more it aids you in your demise. It just makes things worse. So that's a really crazy, and, and for me, it's very, very, I love it. That's my favorite thing about being here is I feel very upheld by those energies completely. And in Bali, the veil between the light and the dark is very thin. It's all about the, the dark spirits and the demons and the, you know, but also about the light. So it's very black and white. So it's a very cool existence in that way, especially when you're not invested in the religious aspect of it, which of course I'm not. I mean, the whole religious thing is another, another story that they're all living, which is great. And there's some beauty in it. And I'm sure it also adds to, because there's a lot of offerings and a lot of ceremonies. And I'm sure all of that energy adds to, you know, a, a greater energy that exists here. But at the same time, it's not really about the religion. So I'm happy that I'm not experiencing it from within that religion, but I get to experience it from my vantage point. So I really, I love being here and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. And that's not to say I travel around for sure. And I'm about to do a bunch of traveling right now. So Indonesia, I'm going to travel Indonesia, which is a good thing since I haven't done that yet. And I've been on this island for how long? So yeah, so we're going to, we're going to travel around and spend no more than three months in each place for at least a year. Oh, okay. So it's cool because this relocation vibration, especially to a place like Bali, where you can leverage the unleashing of the fullest creative capacities with not draining too big of a hole in the wallet is excellent because the entire vibe of ocean and nature energy is just further fueling what is unleashing creatively because a lot of the time you won't see specific nuanced aspects to life that when you're locked in a bedroom, it just as an example. But anyway, there's that component. And then there's the component of, like you mentioned, the difference between when you see things completely non-dually versus when you still see things dualistically and like kind of seeing that vantage point is, is so interesting because you can go one level up to see it but the ones here can't yet see it um yes. and then because i was also there and i love being a level up it's so much better uh, and <clears throat> so you're You feel like the next year you're going to go. <coughs> Woo. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to go every three months to a new place near that area. So Indonesia. Might be less, but no more than three months. Like if there's a place we want to you know, rent a place and stay for a bit, we have three months. That's it. Are you and going with your sister? 
I'm going to go with my partner. With your partner. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we may, you know, like, I think we're going to start in Java and we want it. There's a whole bunch, like Java's huge. But there's 17,000 islands that make up Bali. Yeah, that's so crazy. So wow. there's a lot of places to go see. Wow. You know? So we'll start there, see where that brings us. And then we're going to travel across. We want to go to Sumba and Sumbawa. And who knows? There's just so many. I mean, we won't do it all in a year. And I don't even know where that year will end us up. Maybe we'll just keep going. The thing that's happening for both of us right now, simultaneously, funnily enough, is that we're not interested in location anymore. Yeah. I'm not interested in being in one place anymore. I've had enough of it. I don't want to keep a house yeah. and I don't want to, it doesn't give me anything that I want. It used to, it doesn't anymore. So I need to be free to move around. I want to go wherever I want to go, whenever I want to go there. I would like, there's so many places to stay here that you can stay in. I, I don't care. It's fine. But I no longer want to be in one place. Like have a home. I'm done with having a home right now. You know, that may change again, but for right now, it doesn't make any sense to me to have a home. I mean, I, I feel like my home is just with me wherever I am. So it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, home is the, sh I am my shiny object. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now I just want to, yeah travel around continue doing what I'm doing continue writing continue you know this group right now has been my life I've started uh started with NLM in January and it was exactly what I was looking for Andrea, had a teacher. Are, are you Andrea are you in no limits mentorship yeah and have you been in it since January since January, since it started. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Definitely. just for those that are listening that don't know, No Limits Mentorship is where people like Andrea, about 22 or so people are in it, something yep. around that, get, well, get one on one, get to ask one on one questions to Bentinho as a group. As a group, they get to ask questions to Bentinho, and then Bentinho responds with these questions, and then they do Zoom calls. And what are the other NLM perks? Well, I mean, just being in a closed um, chat group like that is has many advantages as well, as well in terms of just each other and how we're reflecting to each other and shepherding each other, um, what we're co-creating and creating together, um, getting to know one another, getting to know how we all work and also purification on times 10. Yes, yes. Like, I mean, it can also be none of that. It depends, you know, on how much you're going to immerse yourself in there, how transparent you're going to allow yourself to be, how much you're going to share. You know, obviously, the more that you participate, the more you're going to get out of it. So putting yourself on the line is a big part of it. But yeah. I mean, really purifying our desires in that group is a big, big part of it. Pretty interesting that the sort of top-down purification comes from Bentinho and the team that have already been undergoing this process for so long. And then there's also this sort of bottom-up purification that's happening in terms of so you much. guys together. Yeah, which is super interesting. And I also have a similar somewhat experience with NLS where it's both happening top down and bottom up and then yes. all the great friendships and stuff that are yeah becoming and I love the way it's merging now like this yeah. is the ultimate for me is the way that it's merging in that way you know so I love it because it's all yeah people are people they all inspire me all the time in so many ways yep. it's insane yep that's another core insight. By the way, it looks like you're, something's blocking a part of the camera. Oh, that's my thigh. Oh, I thought that was like your leg or something. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'm cool. holding it in between my knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While yeah. I'm sitting on the bed. <laughs> in between the knees. That's crazy. Yeah, that's my tripod. 
Yeah, it's my tripod <laughs> right now. Yeah, I saw both your hands appear in the shot, and I was like, okay, there's something happening that I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying I'm enjoying it a lot. It's um, it's just furthering, you know, what what I've been already working on and what Likewise. I've been already headed. And also in terms of the team aspect too, that's been very exciting because that's in fact why I applied because I knew I just had a feeling that. Like, I mean, what? It's just going to go on ad nauseum month after month. After. No, it's heading somewhere. It's heading somewhere. The people in this group, something's going to, we're going to do something. We're going to be part of something and we're going to, and that's all I want. It's like, it's the turning the world right side up again thing. Mm, that's yeah, my next, yeah, that's yeah, my next yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I, I will not cool. rest until you, you, my five-year-old self is. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool that you <laughs> had... You, you knew that that there was that evolutionary blossoming that was going to unfold and that there was yeah. that that there was oh, that yeah. purification aspect to it plus the service at a larger level that's unfolding yeah. which is and you know how i knew you know how i knew truly is because i'm going to be part of it that's how i knew if i'm going to be part of it oh, well then i know where it's headed <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know, yeah. Damn. that's it. For yeah. sure. For sure. I know exactly where it's headed if I'm going to be part of it. And I feel that way in many situations, you know, in unknown situations that are ahead of me. Uh, what if you don't like it? What if it's this? What if it's that? What if it's the other? Mm. For me, it's always, I'll be there. So it'll be great. I'll be there. So what do, what do I have to be afraid of? You know, that's always been my thing. It's Gosh, like, yes. well, I'll be there. So yeah, no worries. And I feel the same way about this, obviously. As long as I'm there, I can't lose. So yeah, and that's another one of my puzzle pieces is I'm like freakishly optimistic all the time all the time it's like a i don't know maybe it's a blueprint thing or i don't know but i'm i'm unable to be negative really i love that well it also speaks to a lot of eradicating the roots of suffering yeah yeah no doubt no doubt no doubt for sure Oh my God, yeah, suffering. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. sure. Like, either one's okay, really. But it's a choice. That's the only thing. Sometimes I choose it, but there's a reason. But mostly, it doesn't have to accompany me. Mostly not. Yeah, I can so sense this just explosiveness post super contracted cage energetic pew, freedom, pew, pew, radical optimism. Pew, I'm going to be there. Pew, like I'm going to flip the world right side up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With, with, with everybody else who wants to do the same, right? Yeah. It's by no means a one woman job. Yeah. You know, radical unattachment. Yeah. 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 And then, like Bentinio says, when you're so detached, it's important then to be careful not to be attached to that. Yeah. Attached to radical <laughs> unattachment. <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> it's easy. It's easy for me to be detached. And so it's also easy to use that as a way. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, totally. 
So be, being careful on that front. The balance. Yay. Yeah. 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 But it's like, hot, but you have to go all the way to the pole. If you don't go all the way to the pole, you'll still have some stinky little attachments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also so that you know you can as well, because going all the way to the pole could be purposeful if as long as it's coming from the right place, it can be purposeful, right? So even in learning how to become detached, I realized that it's like, okay, well, why am I choosing this over that? And I know, okay, well, no, you're, you're detached from the outcome. It's not about that. It's not, no, but it, then I realized, oh, it's because I'm detached that I need to do that thing. Because for the first time, it's not coming from some kind of greed or need or whatever. So you got to do it now. Now's the time to do that thing. Because now it's going to have an actual impact because you don't really care. So it's about those finding those things out where yeah. the whole purpose of attachment is freedom or detachment is freedom yeah. so that you can walk into anything as long as you're coming from the right place and serve whatever that service requires. You can do it because you're detached, but you're not serving yourself. So that's kind of cool too, because it's like almost like, oh, okay, I gotta, oh, I can, yeah, give myself permission to do that thing there, which normally I would think is nasty. But it's like, yeah, but you're not doing it to be nasty. You know, so everything, like it doesn't matter what it is, it only matters why. It doesn't matter what and what. One man's treasure is another man's trash. The what doesn't matter. And there's only so much under the sun. But the why, why you're doing it, why you said it, why you chose it, why you're coming from there, that's all that matters. That's what I think creates the power or the fuel or the flavor of the thing Jeez. is the why. great yeah and sometimes with clients that i work with that's an exercise every time you make a choice ask yourself why every single time every time and they're like yeah well i'm going to be doing that all day i'm like yeah that's the point all day every day every time you're cognizant of a choice ask yourself why it's a great exercise Get really <clears throat> sensitive at where you're coming from. Yes. And also get really sensitive at how often you choose. Yeah. Become aware. Yeah. You know, that you're choosing in every second. And you're either King Kong, you know, or walking through, but, you know, I'm going to put my foot here and I'm going to put my, well, I got to walk. And it's like, yeah, okay. There goes a whole building of people. There goes a whole, you know, oh, yeah. being yeah. sensitive, being aware. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it gets easier. I think it gets more automatic. Like we said, it gets longer. It totally gets more automatic, but there's a... <clears throat> <clears throat> it's so funny sometimes there will be this like beautiful just flowing of the free perfection and then there will also yeah. be this like the free perfection noticing that like well like, I'm pretty sure there's still some shit here. <laughs> and, and like, that's also like the process of uh, knowing that there's still some fraudulent stuff and that it, the flow will naturally show that fraudulent stuff. Um, yeah. And it's just so funny because like, like, this is like, this is like the last thing. Like the last thing is to sort of like, it just disappear into the ordinary, like stop 
seeking to be seen like just disappear into life itself like undergo yeah. this process of no self just disappear into life itself like be cool yeah. with being nobody everybody and somebody but without any attachment to being seen by the rest of life just be life itself rather than being a separate person trying to extract peace and happiness and all this other stuff from life mm -hmm. and like i just love that like adi ashanti style die into the ordinary just die yeah. into the ordinary. And that just makes me feel so much more at ease and relaxed and surrendered and at peace when I can sort of look at that intellectually and then begin embodying it more experientially and just feeling the slow realization of it really become more and more anchored in. Be known only to yourself. You're, you're known only to yourself? Well, to be known only to yourself. It's me who needs to know, only me, only me. Mm. Yeah, you're the somebody chunk of life that wants the seeking impulse is to become transparent yeah. to your nature. Yeah. That's right, to know, to know myself. Sorry, I had to plug in my phone there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> People want yeah, to be different. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. To yeah. become known. By, yes, by yes. Me, yes. Right? What's the yes. first rule is to know your mind. Know your mind. And, and when we are practicing knowing our mind, it also happens to be that our mind is ourselves mm. at that time. It is. We identify our minds with ourselves and our bodies with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? So to really be known by yourself, actually known. Yeah. Yes, but detached from anyone else really knowing you or seeing you. There you go. Yeah. Because it all does anyway, the, it blends together anyway, but you have to go all the way to the pole first. And then anyway, as you shepherd, people will naturally, as you, in Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 33, you first seek the kingdom of God within, and then all these fruits come to you. But you, you go there first, you focus on the roots first, roots, roots, inside, inside, consciousness, infinity, emptiness, transcend it all. And then you get to a point where you shepherd so cleanly in service to the one intelligence that were any way fruits come, but you're so disattached from the fruits that you don't let them trigger you into any of your identifications. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 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 For sure. It's like making money. You don't need to make money. You know, you need to focus on yourself and your growth and being true and knowing where you're coming from and guess what if you do that long enough money is just an inevitable result it just comes you don't have to try for it <laughs> you know it's almost a wasted effort making money because there's no reason for it there's no truth behind it. What is it good for? Make self and money will come. And no matter what befalls my life, immediately I go to vibration, immediately, immediately. because that's all that matters that's all that's required that's the only thing that requires my attention another richard condon saying what is the only thing that requires your attention your vibration mm -hmm. nothing else yeah it's great and then the unfolding is from there yeah. yeah yeah and i live that i live that for sure i mean i've lived that a long time just to hear him speak that i was just like yes Nothing else matters. There's been a lot of excitement in 
NLS around coming from that place of vibrational wholeness and unity. And Bentinho has been pretty adamant about getting us to focus on that vibrational state and then having that unfold all of the exterior circumstances. The more that uh-huh. you're whole and unified and seeing the homogenous existence, seeing intelligent infinity, the more that you come from that place, the more that you're vibrationally it, that it's locked in, that you're getting it, that you've got it, that the more that it unfolds from from this unit of life itself. And so- From there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the- <clears throat> energy you create within is what the outcome will be yeah as well so it has to be the same yes 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 it's all a mirror in and out it's such a mirror yeah collapsed into one yeah mm-hmm. yeah and that's i see that happening in the, in all of the groups definitely that coming together from that undivided wholeness It's happening and less efforting and pushing and forcing and making. Yeah. Wow. That's like the, the ideal is not having to look over your shoulder, not having to, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, do the double checking where you're coming from not having to feel fear to say something into the field of the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think you have to accompany that with also sort of a a childlike glee for maybe being called out and maybe having a reflection of some impurity It has to be, that has to be just as exciting. Definitely. Totally. And just as interesting. I mean, we have to somewhat live for that to a certain extent. If we truly want to become purified, then we have to look forward to any and all ways that that could potentially happen. Yeah. Look, look and forward then to the key of that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Look forward to yeah, that. Yeah. You know, because then also when you're yeah. looking forward to that, then you also have less of a chance of censoring yourself or being uh, not being transparent because it's it's okay. Be transparent. Be honest. Be real. Believe me, you'll get all the feedback you need. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, those that's were my such. Fave. Yeah, just be real. I love the look forward to the purification dissolving that shit's funny like look forward to it like get pumped about it yeah that's great i love the get pumped energy about it there's like such a taboo around um like dissolving that and it's better to come at it from excitement of like all right all right baptized by fire yeah yeah let's let's see what it's the same as fear it's yeah. the same with fear, like to use fear as a marker. That's how I use it. Yeah. I mean, unless there's a bear in front of me, unless there's an imminent death in front of me, fear means do that. <laughs> to me, yes. Interesting. Do that. Yeah. What am What am I most afraid of right now? That's my the next thing on my agenda. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. It has to be. Because then otherwise I'm avoiding and otherwise then I'm coming from fear. I mean, it's a place that I can clearly eliminate coming from there. Yeah, yeah. Clearly. So why wouldn't I just take myself up on it? (laughs) 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 Hmm. 
Yeah. This kind of boils down to also the yes theory, seek discomfort. I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then again. Uh, but to the extreme. Yeah, yeah. And then don't be attached. Com- yeah, because when it's comfortable, when it becomes comfortable, seek, di- seek discomfort until it becomes comfortable. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And then don't necessarily seek it anymore but instead revel in the freedom you have to be in it or not. It's the same. There you go. Yeah. Exhaust the seeking. And then you can discern between when you're abiding in the freedom versus when you're contracting your energy. Yeah. And, and also just knowing that you can go anywhere to serve, that you're not confined in confined quarters. Well, I can serve like this or I can serve like that. No, you can serve in any way that is called for because you're not attached to anything. It's kind of funny, like even after transcending the paradigm of spirituality itself, that there's still a purification. Like even if you've exhausted, yeah, even if, not, yeah. yeah, even if you exhaust the seeker though, which is like that's like okay, fine, like it's time to drop the seeker because you you like you get spirituality, you got it, like transcend the script that you've been chasing the last couple of years, like you get it. But then the thing that remains is purification. <laughs> yeah, that's what's funny. That's the thing that remains. It kind of goes on forever. Yeah. Like it just goes on and goes on and goes on and goes on. You never come to the last. You'll never come to the last expression of infinity, just like you'll never come to the last conditioning of the mind body spirit complex. That shit's funny. Well, and literally, thank God for that. Yeah, it gives us a fucking odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. That's a pretty yeah. cool. That's a pretty cool place to wrap. Do you feel so? The witch, sorry? To wrap, to close up the show. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't, pre- I wasn't sure yeah. My terminology, you, you want to wrap, girl? Let's wrap, wrap the show, wrap the yes. show. No, I'm ha- no, that's fine. It's good. We, I think we got some good chit chat out there. It was very good. I feel so honored to be, have been a part of it. And I'm, I'm so happy to have met you. Me too, Andrew. As well. Me too. Like really. And now, we're going to be working together yeah it's cool to see what unfolds yeah in what's unfolding and i really recommend people to check out the links in the bio to not only the no limits society conversations playlist that we were mentioning but also the no limit society the link is in the bio below go and check it out such a cool Mm -hmm. place guys to be at and all the things that andrea was sharing with us about getting it locking it in just being real all these types of things are like the front and center of <laughs> so no limits right right yeah oh see i missed out on because we're on zoom and we're not on the other thing all those fancy little quotes that you would put up on the screen there Hey, she's got like she knows what we yeah, correct. I would have no, I, I would have been putting that. all of them up on StreamYard if we were on that platform for sure. Oh, for sure. I just love yeah. it. I love it when you do that because it sort of just slowly quickly immortalizes that person. Yes. In that moment. It yes. grabs a snapshot of yes. their brilliance and their genius. Yes. And their love and their infinite self. And it's just beautiful and wonderful. Yes. It further encapsulates the aroma or the firework and then it further amplifies for the viewers like oh there's that key bit and then like yeah it sits in greater it's great yeah i mean it acts as so many like it serves as well in such a great way yeah no it's really lovely it's really lovely i'm so happy that you catch that that part's it's definitely one of my favorite parts it's like a live distillation of that's my favorite part i'm not kidding my yeah. favorite part i love it when you do that because cool you're so sweet it's just it's just like a tickle you know it's just like oh he's gonna write that down he's gonna display that you know <laughs> yeah seriously you're so seriously. sweet See? oh you're so really sweet true. you're so sweet so i like i like that as well but anyway 
This is back to that recognizing like that. and translating. She's so fucking yes. good at this. She's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'll have and more ep- we'll we'll have more episodes together where I'll get the opportunity to do the live um, uh s- distillation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which will yeah, be good. Of course. Yeah. I'm looking oh, forward to that. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. great. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Maybe maybe I'll be able to um interview you for my audience at one point. Ah, yeah, we could also do, we've welcomed that on the show as well, where the conversation is a little bit more flipped also from from you, uh, which, and regardless, it'll still be a good dialectic. That's, that's the, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, it's a play. So it'd it'd be good. We could definitely do that on, on the program as well, or we could also do that if you would like for the channel or whatnot that yeah you, that you're building on on your end or yeah, for yeah, whatever, for sure. whatever we end up unfolding which we don't even know what uh, that's right yeah, yeah. all or that stuff just on, or even just on a call i just have a bazillion questions for you so you know we'll get perfect to them. perfect all right thanks everybody for tuning in we love you so much super grateful We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know your thoughts about getting it, locking it in, all this good (laughs) stuff. I love that. I love that. Uh, Just be real, all those good ones. And like the video if it brought you value, helps the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't to the channel. Share the video with people that you know this would profoundly benefit. And check out the links in the bio below to Andrea's writing. She's got a lot of great writing on her medium. Check out her Instagram as well. That link's in the bio below. And she's got a lot of great posts there to check out. And check out the No Limit Society. Again, the conversations playlist and also the No Limit Society link as well to the actual platform. All right. That is a wrap. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. So grateful.